This is the Core i5-12600K. This was actually released two years ago, November 2021, and this is Intel's 12th core generation CPU. But this is the first generation for its big little core architecture, or this was codenamed Elder Lake. Now, we're already on the 14th generation of core processors, with the 13th and 14th Core i5s having additional e-cores. Let's see if this two-year-old processor is still decent for competitive gaming. For our test rig, we're going to put this 12600K in a Z690 board. We've got 32GB of DDR4 memory in here, 3600MHz, the RTX 3080, alongside an 850 watts power supplies. We're using the latest drivers and updated Windows 10 Pro with a fresh install. So, and before we proceed, let's have a quick look at our benchmarking charts. For those of you guys who are new to the channel, when you're looking at something like this, average FP is 1% and 0.1% lows don't just look at individual numbers but actually take these things as a whole the tighter their gaps are the better it is for competitive gaming because you'll have that consistency and which would mean your precision will be higher if you want real-time measurement of stuttering you'll be looking at the frame time charts for frame times it's ideal that we would have a more consistent line the more erratic this line is the more stuttering your experience is as a gamer but if you're looking at the frame time charts you will have an understanding on what the player is going through. Now, although this is a K processor, we're not doing any overclocking here. We are, however, will be taking into account disabling E cores, which we know when we disable E cores, this will increase the available cache for the regular performance cores. Okay. Let's start with our first game. Call of Duty Modern Warfare and we've got 1440p resolution in here with, with quality DLC is turned on. Now if you look at this one closely, we are comparing E-Cores turned on and E-Cores turned off and you can see that having E-Cores turned off is actually bitter for uh, Call of Duty. So we're going to continue with this one. Okay, let's move on to Warzone and here we have Almazra which is uh, a really graphically and C intensive map and we can see in here that even if we're using DLSS we are actually CPU bound here and this is because our CPU can't push it higher and because of that our graphics card uses is actually less than 80% now the FPS is just hovering around 130 FPS with lows at around 100 FPS now obviously if you want to increase the FPS in this scenario you may need to get a better CPU though we already have disabled our e cores in here we are only running at 4.5 gigahertz old core boost in here despite the 12600k having 4.9 single core boost in terms of frame times it's a bit consistent apart from a little bit of stuttering here and there micro stutters it's probably from the rtx 3080 card it's actually much more smoother on an amd card if you look at our previous video here we have the gulag so in the gulag because it's a smaller map we're able to push the fps even higher uh, we've got about 170 FPS in here with actually much better frame times. Temperatures are pretty good in here at around 60 plus degrees Celsius even though we're just using uh, a tower cooler in here which is uh, an Optua Redux tower cooler only for heat pipe but it's okay. The CPU power is roughly at 90 watts. So overall, the experience in Warzone is actually, it's okay. It's it's not the best, but it's okay. If we just take a quick comparison in here, this is our recording with our 5800X3D, which is a much better CPU compared to the 600K. You can see the difference in here in terms of that performance. Now, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll be transitioning over to the Modern Warfare 3 engine for Warzone. We're still currently under Modern Warfare 2 so if you want to be up to date with these changes hit that subscribe button we continuously do testing for our competitive games game. okay let's move on to the next game Apex Legends and like always we are using competitive settings here at 1440p now let's have a quick look at e-cores turn on and e-cores turn off for Apex Legends and you can see in here that when e-cores turn off it's actually Peter regardless if it's the action scenes or static scenes we are actually getting better fps in here with e cores turned off so we'll stay on that one moving on to the actual gameplay now dropping off the ship normally has poor fps and one percent lows but this is expected boys we know that 
the server is loading and everything players are loading textures are loading so yes those fps numbers are expected when we are on the ground however we are already on a gpu bottleneck scenario not running across the fields we are getting really high fps at 1440p with pretty decent one percent lows like look at that one now we have 50 percent cpu utilization at around 90 watts on action scenes it's actually pretty good now this is a very smooth experience for me apex regions is well optimized this, uh, this is why i like this game very stable you can see the action in here at around 180 to 220 fps even with effects Overall, your Apex Legends experience with a 12600K will be pretty decent. Well, obviously, you wouldn't be able to get maxed out FPS at 1440p with the RTX 3080, but it's still decent and it's competitive enough. You can hit those shots, the frame times are smooth. There are, however, micro stutters in game, but this is a pretty tolerable and a pretty negligible. So it's, it's fine, it's fine. So the 12600K is actually okay for Apex Legends. Okay, let's move on to fortnite now fortnite just recently has the og version now for the map and we're going to look first at all three apis and compare e-course turn on and e-course turn off let's start with dx12 and we can see in here that it actually favors dx12 and this is because of how dx12 works utilizing all those efficient course let's move on to dx11 and on this scenario i think it's pretty close yeah it's pretty close you can see that there's a little bit of difference in here which could be margin of error but i'd say that probably doesn't matter for either of these however when we go to performance mode this one it's pretty clear that turning off the e-course for our 12600k actually will result in better performance so we're going to stick with this one and if you find this one really helpful hit that like button boys and let's proceed to actual gameplay here we go performance mode at 1440p and first thing that you'd notice is that dropping off from the bus will yield pretty bad numbers in terms of our fps and one percent lows but as mentioned before this is expected as everything else in the server is loaded FPS when running around town will be it's okay 300 FPS with 1% lows at around 170 plus FPS we do have some micro status here and there some frame time spikes which is normal for this game now I would just disregard the 0.1% lows on any multiplayer game as anything related to server latency will affect this number CPU usage is around 50% and our CPU power is around 80 watts which is actually lower and this is understandable because we're only using a fewer cores with performance mode. Obviously with performance mode we are going to be CPU bound here. Our GPU is only at around 60% and this is expected. Let's go for some action scenes in here. Now my squad has been boxed into a corner here. You can see that in close quarters combat it's actually okay. Okay, uh, it's mostly stable. We're getting about 300 plus FPS. 1% lows are at 200 FPS. Although we do have micro status here and there, but it's tolerable. The 12600K will be fine for competitive Fortnite. Let's move on to the next game, Valorant. And we are running competitive settings here at 1440p. And as always, we're looking comparison between Ecores turn off and Ecores turn on for 12600K. And it's pretty clear in here, boys, that turning off Ecores is actually better for Valorant gameplay. So we're going to disable Ecores for this one for valorant we have disabled one percent and 0.1 percent low metrics and this is because it skews up the numbers especially when we're using omens shadow realm ability and there are other ui elements as well which would affect this now we know valorant is a cpu dependent game and fps is pretty good with our 12600k we are running at around 300 or 400 fps if there's not much going on or we're just going around the map and this number does drop down to less than 300 if there's heavy action or effects within the scene we also have some micro status at the start of the game and some more micro status especially 
especially when there's a quick transition like when you're on the buy screen or there's quick effects or a result of a match however as i mentioned this is okay and this is tolerable r12600 k is only utilized at 35 percent while gpu is utilized at the same rate around 40 percent temperatures are pretty good at less than 60 degrees i think 60 degrees is the top one and our cpu power is less than 80 watts so yeah it's quite decent for um competitive valorant obviously not the best but it's still decent okay let's move on to pubg and first things off we are running competitive settings at dx11 and cans and we're looking in here comparison between efficient cores turn on and efficient cores turn off and we can see clearly that we are getting better results with efficient cores turn off so we're going to be keeping the settings when we're doing our actual gaming scenario for pubg we do have micro status which do occur now and then and i suspect this is related to the surface or the game engine itself obviously it's not the smoothest game gaming experience but as I mentioned this is mostly related to a game engine issue rather than our hardware issue. Now on urban scenarios our 12600k is able to push around 200 plus fps with lows at around 100 plus fps and this is at 1440p. When we do move around in a car you can see that those 1% lows will be heavily affected as I mentioned this is most likely related to the game engine which is still loading those other elements and players as you're going through the massive map and because pubg is a much more slower based game these status micro status and spikes wouldn't be so much of an issue as compared to faster paced games like call of duty or fortnite and you can see in here that i'm able to just snipe away with ease scanning the map with my scope felt smooth and it's an okay experience i'm able to hit those shots now you do get those occasional frame time spike but it's okay right, cpu usage is between 40 percent and 55 percent which is not bad and we are obviously in a cpu bound scenario here as our gpu is not maxed out even at 1440p the temperatures is higher compared to the other games that we previously played so yeah what do you guys think of the 12600k would you be buying one if let's say it's on sale let me know of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching the video i will see you guys on the next one